Hi everyone, uh, my name is James Early. Um, I am an artist based in Dublin and today I'll be talking to you about uh, my practice. Uh, just first of all, I'd like to say a special thanks to Peter and Chloe and the Hugh Lane team. Uh, thanks very much for having me. Uh, amazing to be part of this artist series. Um, so I'm, I'm very honoured to be part of it. Thank you. Uh, so I guess uh, I have a PDF presentation that I'm just going to hop into now. Um, great, perfect. So, um, yeah, I guess just a bit about uh, my own practice. So, um, most of my practice focuses on, if not all of it, on stained glass. And uh, I work over a lot of different mediums. I'd definitely be a, a multidisciplinarian. Um, I'd probably be best known for a lot of my larger scale works, uh, murals. And uh, a lot of these are site specific in their nature. Um, and I also do or have done large interactive pieces as well. Uh, this one was with Algorithm. Um, it was called Perpetua, and it was a large uh, interactive piece uh, where we mapped uh, animations onto a black and white mural that I painted. Um, and this is another large scale work as well, um, which is still up in the centre of Dublin, uh, called Amor Fati, and that was with uh, the developers I put. Uh, so a lot of the work is, is large scale, um, it's uh, accessible to the public very easily. Um, but I also have a studio practice as well, uh, which, which focuses on stained glass and making stained glass works and trying to progress uh, what people's, uh, or change people's perceptions of what stained glass can be as a medium. Um, and then taking certain structural elements from stained glass and working with other materials such as uh, perspex. So this, these are on the left, laser cut perspex uh, works and on the right, uh, laser cut wood. So kind of the similar principles to uh, um, how one would build up a stained glass window or employed in these medium or media. Um, and then also work with uh, uh, other fabricators. Uh, so rug makers, uh, Catacomb, rugs um, worked with them a few times and also works on paper as well so be it silk screen prints like this um, or either uh, working with Stony Row Press or uh, publishers that I've worked with in the past as well. Um, so I guess uh, just a bit more about the medium stained glass um, and its importance to me and I guess to understand the mechanics as well for you guys about stained glass. So, so on the top left there, you can see there's uh, a cross section of a piece of lead. Um, and that, in essence, that and the glass are the main elements that, that you'd associate with stained glass. So um, when you cut the piece of stained glass, uh, they slot either side of that. And then after you've leaded everything, uh, you at the bottom left there, you can see there's a soldering um, tool that basically you'll solder all the joints throughout. And that's what um, gives the main rigidity and structure to the piece. Uh, there's also cement that is used as well, that fills in any areas on the front and the back in between uh, the lead and the glass. Um, that's a condensed version of what it is, but uh, it, 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 it's very labor intensive and uh, definitely it takes quite a bit of planning. Um, and yeah, for me, I like the idea of when you deconstruct the stained glass, uh, what kind of ways you can, uh, I guess, visualize that and use that in a thematic uh, manner or to kind of illustrate different, uh, I guess, concepts. So on the left hand side, you can see uh, where the lead is being removed and some of the graphic elements are uh, visualizations of, of pieces of glass kind of in, in motion uh, where they've detached from the lead. 
uh, this piece is a commentary on um, the, Catholic, the Catholic Church in Ireland and religion and, uh, you know, degradation of power. And uh, so that's, that's, that's one kind of idea behind that. Uh, and then um, on the piece on the right hand side was um, a self portrait and uh, there's absolutely no lead in this and this, uh, the piece of glass are painted and they're in a state of flux um, and it comments on mental health. Um, so that was part of my show and uh, I had a show in 2018 and uh, that was called Things Fall Apart. Uh, and also as well, there's uh, the laser cut MDF piece here on the left or the sprayed wood. Again, you can see how the various different facets uh, mimic those of, of uh, cut stained glass, but again, using a different medium to do that. Piece on the right is with uh, iPut um, that I mentioned earlier, and this is a large printed banner. Uh, so I was very much kind of keen to look at the materiality of glass uh, using the medium and pushing it as far as I could. Uh, all of this was computer generated graphics, uh, bar, actually, sorry, not all of it, some, some of the elements I'd photographed stained glass um, and they're, they're, they're in the background. Uh, you can see various kind of black lines and these signify the lead becoming detached from the windows. Um, another element that I find intriguing about stained glass is the materiality of, um, of it. And uh, you can see here on the top left, uh, with handmade glass, you get some beautiful, beautiful uh, characteristics, uh, such as these are seeds. Uh, they'd be the water, or sorry, the uh, air suspended almost uh, like a, a liquid um, within the piece of glass. Um, and there's various different striations that you can get as well, you can see on the bottom left. Um, so I incorporate these into my painted murals uh, to give uh, added texture to them and also to, again, reference uh, the characteristics of, of stained glass. Um, the resonance and tone as well is something that is uh, really, really interesting uh, to me, uh, um, as well as looking at other media, uh, such as uh, Perspex and, uh, as I was explaining earlier, just seeing how um, you can kind of get this idea of transparency uh, as well as uh, uh, various other forms that are innate within the, within the material. Um, the level of craftsmanship is something that I find, it's, it's extremely high and I've mentioned uh, earlier that it's a very labour intensive uh, process. Um, and uh, with that comes a lot of heritage. Uh, so, so much kind of, so like uh, it's been going for so, so long, there's so much, uh, I guess, uh, uh, craftsmanship handed down, the various different techniques are handed down through generation to generation. And uh, I've seen that in a couple of different studios I've, I've worked with. And also um, my family used to be stained glass artists. Uh, they, ran a business in the city centre of Dublin for over a hundred years. So uh, I was very aware of a lot of them, a lot of the different processes and uh, um, also I guess just the, the, the various different companies that were working within Ireland, um, namely Harry Clark and their studios, they were both working at a similar time. So There are, I mean, Harry Clark in particular used a lot of amazing different techniques in his. And one of the main ones was probably flash, um, acid etching with flash glass. Flash glass is basically a piece of colored glass that has a very, very thin, thin um, color on top of it. And uh, as you etch away, you can etch away the thin layer on top and it reveals more of the other color underneath. So that's how you would get a lot of the kind of purples that he used in his glasses and a lot of uh, uh, other elements to them as well, the textures. 
Um, so I think currently where stained glass is at the moment and what really interests me about it is um, it's, it's, it might be seen as quite an age old uh, kind of medium, but there's a lot more going on to it. Uh, with it um, than, than people really think uh, or are aware of. Uh, it's not, it's becoming more and more commonplace. I've seen uh, outside of a religious context, which is uh, definitely something that I feel um, its potential will, pardon the pun, really shine. Um, so that is something that, that I definitely uh, have been and, and I'm keen to keep on pursuing. Um, and then I guess just uh, with that, uh, with, with uh, contemporary stained glass, there's, there's more and more uh, techniques aided with technology, um, such as removal of lead. Um, so this is a section on the right hand side of a piece that I made with a company called Derricks. Um, they're based over in Germany. They would have fabricated uh, Gerhard Richter's window on the left hand side. And uh, you can see on the right-hand side of mine, there's absolutely no lead used on this. Um, so uh, uh, yeah, it is a medium that is constantly changing um, as technology kind of pushes it into to new exciting areas. And uh, this level of kind of high craft is something that I would, kind of any medium that I work with, I like to try and see what is the most I can push and what has been done before, understand um, where uh, the new exciting areas of this medium can, 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 can be realized. So um, if it's silk screen printing, if it's laser cut perspex, if it's working with Catagon, they're all different mediums and, and that I find really, really interesting. Um, the last thing, just before I go on to, to my own work, some more detail, uh, is a pretty, pretty, pretty uh, important one to me. Um, and that is the idea that there's strong parallels between stained glass uh, and the murals that, that I create um, in the sense of scale and in narrative as well. Um, they're both originally very, very accessible to the general public. And stained glass for a long time, um, you know, when people were illiterate, um, they would go into the churches and they would be, uh, they would understand the stories of the Bible through these gorgeous large scale uh, visual interpretations of the stories. So I think uh, today we now have uh, large scale murals and they have exactly that dissimilar accessibility and, and uh, strong narratives running through a lot of them. And that's definitely something that I employ in my work. Um, so I'm gonna talk about two projects. Um, the first one is uh, for, it was for St. Patrick's Grammar School, um, uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral Grammar School actually. And uh, it's just beside, as the name suggests, St. Patrick's Cathedral. And uh, it was a two-part project, uh, and it's similar to, to the second project I'll talk about as well. Um, it was a stained glass piece uh, coupled with a mural. So very much kind of embodying what I just spoke about previously there. Um, this work was, as with all the public works I create, it was site-specific. And um, the three panels, uh, represent um, a couple of things. So, so there is a strong link between um, the school and the cathedral, and uh, uh, it's really between uh, the main vein that's a common ground between the two is the music uh, and the choir, and it's a very long relationship that they have. And uh, there was aspects of the interior of the church that are a cathedral that I worked into this piece. Um, and uh, that was through color, through texture. Um, but uh, there was also, within the piece, there was a lot of different uh, glass employed 
within it. Um, a lot of different textures and techniques as well. Some was hand painted and then fired in the kiln, uh, but uh, everything was handmade, uh, including the glass, um, which was uh, bought stained. I bought the various different colors uh, to spec. And uh, um, yeah, there was also another small detail to think about is actually on the other side of this window, there's an apartment. So the piece actually acted as, um, as a screening device as well. Um, to show you now a bit more detail about the design itself. So you can see there's the three sections and the idea behind it is um, it's based around the educational system and there's uh, the primary, the secondary and the third level. And one weaves seamlessly into the next, into the next. And the idea is that when we leave third level that uh, we become the ones that uh, help to educate uh, those coming into primary. So this idea of the school being a hub and a centre of the community and that it kind of distills various different uh, ideas um, is very much, I guess, the, 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 at the heart of this piece. Um, when we look at uh, the next slide, you can see exactly now where, where those tones and where the relevant uh, elements come from the cathedral. So you can see there's uh, the arched roofs or, uh, or arch, sorry, vaulted ceilings are uh, within the piece at the top and also uh, at the bottom. And there's also uh, within the vo vaulted elements, there's a brickwork, a lattice work of bricks that also uh, appear on the side panels of the piece in parts. Um, the um, marbling effect as well is, uh, it, it, it pops up in a couple of different places. So um, these kind of textural elements, as well as uh, uh, a really important thing to, to, to employ is um, the thickness of lead. Uh, so I'd work up all my designs in black and white first in grayscale and then I would put the colour in. So um, if your lead line uh, is, it's all the same throughout, you don't really get much rhythm. Uh, so you're very much using the line work to pull certain elements forward and push other elements back within the piece. And then the colour obviously enhances that uh, rhythm to, to, to uh, a higher degree. This was the mural that uh, was coupled along with the piece and uh, you can see that colour-wise there's lots of elements that, that, that link the two as well as a uh, certain uh, uh, kind of, I guess, uh, yeah, cer certain, certain kind of movements within it, uh, the graphic kind of uh, elements in it that, that uh, play along with these, these various different uh, uh, arches within the piece. Um, the halftone element as well is painted throughout the piece <coughs> and then there's uh, various different elements in it as well that uh, suggest the characteristics within stained glass. Mm. The last part of the, the mural that, that I want to talk about is uh, the the building that it's painted onto the side of the gable end of is uh, the oldest building in the school and uh, within that there's an arch uh, or there's, there's, there's an arch uh, made out of wood uh, that again is echoed on the outside so you can see this there's, there's a lot of uh, elements within the piece that um, are very much site specific um, but this idea of stained glass work playing and having a relationship with uh, the mural I hadn't done before. So uh, it was definitely, it was a great, very much a, a, a groundbreaking piece for me. So the next piece uh, is, it was called Circadian and it began with the design of the stained glass piece. Uh, I collaborated with uh, Derek's, the, uh, the German fabricators that I mentioned earlier. And uh, I started off with a Romanesque window. And, uh, 
I was looking at the idea of um, our circadian rhythms and uh, how they had been altered throughout the lockdown. And usually what happens if your internal rhythms are off, your sleep is off, um, and various other things, you, you, you can basically, it leads to mental and physical degradation. So um, this is, you can see this, obviously this is a sun going from, uh, from, from dawn till dusk. And uh, I designed a triptych uh, window and I based the colors around the tones uh, of dawn and dusk. So here's the piece, uh, the central panel. Um, and these are the two outer panels, but uh, I'll just go back to the central one. So the, uh, the line work here, actually, it references uh, our heartbeats and our breaths. And uh, the ratio between the two is one is to five um, of how many we have um, comparatively to the other. So the thin lines are uh, one fifth the thickness of, of, of the others. And uh, then the elements within it are based on uh, um, a muscular uh, kind of sinew within, within the body. Um, so there's uh, a sub, I guess, a, 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 a uh, abstracted anatomic forms, a lattice work of that, holding all of these various different elements. And then there's a main focal point in the center of the sun that's radiating out all of these elements. Uh, so for as a test piece, myself and Derek's worked together on, on, on this. And uh, this was uh, a translation of uh, the larger central window into a smaller, uh, more manageable uh, sculptural work. Um, it is two meters in height. And uh, uh, here is the piece itself. So um, there's a huge amount of detail in this, a lot of different processes. And uh, we were keen to, I mean, even, even the, the freestanding um, metal stand is custom designed. Uh, we worked on that together. We uh, also employed te some techniques that hadn't uh, been used before. Um, so there was, yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of different elements going on in this. There was sandblasting, there was acid etching, there was uh, hand painted elements, there was lots of different textures of glass. The textures of glass were, when, when you look at it up close, they're weaving harmoniously the grains with them, in them with the various different uh, um, kind of movements of. Of, of, of the large graphic shapes. Uh, so it was, I was there with them for, for about two weeks. Um, there's a lot of prep before I went over to them, um, but it was, uh, yeah, just phenomenal. Phenomenal to work with a studio like that, that are really at the cutting edge of this craft um, or artwork, art form. Um, so here's some other uh, shots. Um, couple of detailed shots as well, so you can kind of see just how close these uh, chamfered pieces of glass are. Um, they're incredibly, incredibly, uh, and that's all hand cut as well. So it's, it's, the precision is absolutely phenomenal. You can also see the grains within uh, the piece of glass. Um, these are undulating rhythms as you pull your, uh, your nail across them, you would, you, would, uh, you would feel the various different indentations. And then on the right hand side, you can see where pieces of glass are, they're, they're stuck onto. So there's a large, thick carrier piece of glass that's uh, um, tough in glass. It's eight millimeters in thickness. And that has some elements painted onto it. And then the other pieces of glass are uh, placed on the front and the back. So in some ways, it's kind of, I guess you could kind of think of it as uh, uh, maybe some elements of uh, registration with silk screen printing um, or, or uh, kind of lithographic printing as well. Um, this was the uh, mural 
that uh, was a reaction to to the other work. Um, and uh, this again, site specific. Um, there was a hospital n close by. It was part of a festival called uh, Ardu Festival. Um, thanks to the guys again for having me for that. Um, and you can see there was uh, the elements of uh, the stained glass, uh, the seeds worked into it, and uh, various other um, elements within the, the structure of the stained glass. Uh, but you can kind of think of this piece as, uh, I guess, like a huge, big, towering sculpture of uh, glass forms that that are kind of in suspension. And you can see various different, uh, the lead lines pulling down, there's only a few there have completely detached themselves. And within all of this, there's there's uh, two abstracted sets of, of lungs. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, it, it's, it's kind of mad when you make a piece and, uh, you know, the public takes ownership over it or, or, or they, they tell you various different stories uh, while you're working on the piece. Um, but uh, about a week or two after I finished the piece, a lady who uh, I'd been chatting to, her mum had been convalescing um, uh, during COVID and she had gotten COVID and she was convalescing in the hospital close by and uh, the two of them, as she got better, would come out and uh, they would go for, for short walks around the area. And she said that, that this piece really resonated with her after I told her what the various different uh, ideas behind it were. But um, yeah, that, that is really kind of, you know, like I said, it's the power of, of large scale, scale works. And um, I know it's an abstract piece of artwork, but you know, a lot of people, when they spoke to them, when they found out about the concept behind it, they loved it even more. But purely on an aesthetic level, it did resonate with 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 a lot of people, um, which is which is great. It's good to see that you can you can kind of push things into new directions, and uh, the public are very receptive to it as well. Um, so, yeah, this is definitely I, th I think probably the most technical and. Yeah, the te most technically trying um, of the murals I've painted before. It was, it was uh, just simple things like uh, gradients working their way down the entirety of the wall uh, on very, very thin, thin, thin um, strips. That's very difficult. Or uh, kind of this long uh, cream line coming down. And, you know, that's all painted by hand. And uh, if you have a gradient underneath and you fall to the line, your eye picks up on it, and then you have to repaint the entirety of the gradient. So it, <laughs> it, was, it was challenging. It was raining a bit as well when we were down there. And also, um, it, we, we, we were in lockdown as well. So, <laughs> um, but uh, uh, yeah, this is the final, final shot of, of the wall. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, it's on, on the side of, a, of, of, of a, a bunch of houses, a huge, big, long stretch of houses. So, um, yeah, lots of, lots of excitement in the area when it went up. But, um, yeah, I guess that, that's really, uh, uh, that's, that's, that's everything to do with, uh, with my practice. I do have, a, if you want to see a film about uh, these two projects, um, you can find it on YouTube if you put in James Early Circadian or James Early St. Patrick's. Um, you'll find two uh, meteor videos. Uh, definitely the, the one um, for Circadian is about five minutes long. I play it now, but I just ran out of time. <laughs> um, but uh, any more details and stuff that you want to find out about, uh, more up to date info on my practice, uh, go to my Instagram. Um, but uh, for the moment, look, thanks very much for having me and uh, uh, wishing you all the very best. Cheers. See you now.